So the specialty training competition data has been published for the 2023-24 cycle. That is for people who have just started their specialty training or residency in the UK as of August 2024. What do I mean by competition data? Well, what used to be Health Education England, HEE, has now been absorbed into NHS England. This is the organisation that runs and manages specialty training across all of the different specialties that you can think of in medicine. So every year after a cycle finishes, they publish the number of training posts that were available, the number of applications they received for those posts, and can then calculate a competition ratio, a measure of how competitive a specialty is based on how many people apply for the limited number of posts available in that specialty. Which then obviously begs the question, which are the most competitive, which are the least competitive? And believe me, there are lots of caveats to this data and how we think about it and how we talk about it, but we'll do that towards the end. And I've broken this down into several sections, so we'll talk about the number of posts available, the number of applications that each specialty receives, and then ultimately which are the most and least competitive, because you need to think about all of these things separately. So let's start with posts. The five specialties with the most posts available are core psychiatry training at CT1 with 490 posts, followed by anaesthetic CT1 with 542, CST core surgical training is next at 645, then IMT a big jump up, internal medicine training at CT1 nearly 1700 posts, and then the behemoth itself general practice ST1 4096 posts. So those are the specialties with the most posts available as a raw number. Then on the flip side, the really niche micro specialties. The five specialties with the least posts available are Diagnostic Neuropathology at ST3 with just six posts for the country. Clinical Pharmacology and Therapeutics at ST4 with five posts. Audio Vestibular Medicine with four. Pediatric and Perinatal Pathology at ST3 with just three posts. And that ties for the first place with Allergy at ST3 with just three posts available. Now the likelihood is, and it's exactly the same for me by the way, even as someone who is very interested academically in workforce and selection stuff, I have not heard of some of the specialties on that list. But I think it illustrates the nice point that if you ask someone what they want to do, the answer that someone can give you is, is only as good as the specialties that they've been exposed to. And that's why seeing lots of stuff through medical school and the foundation program and taster weeks, all of these chances to gain more experience are so important because with some of these really small specialties, you are just never ever gonna come across them just by searching. So now we need to look at the next bit of the data, which is the numbers of applications that each specialty receives. So at number five, we have an anesthetic CT1 with 3,522 applications. Radiology at ST1 will receive 3,719, core psychiatry 4,650, an IMT at CT1 again with 6,273, and general practice, as perhaps to be expected, received 15,036 applications for those just over 4,000 posts. And then the five specialties that received the least applications, clinical pharmacology and therapeutics received 23 applications, Audio Vestibular Medicine 22, Medical Ophthalmology, a new one on the list at ST3 with 16 applications, Pediatric and Perinatal Pathology at ST3, 7 applications, and Diagnostic Neuropathology at ST3, just 6 applications. And again, we'll talk about this more at the end of the video, but applications as a raw number can be a bit of a flawed metric because you've got to remember that people are fully capable of applying to multiple specialties in the same cycle. And in fact, it's quite easy to do so and there's no limit on the specialties that you can apply to. So it is just as easy for me to apply to anaesthetics as it is to GP, as it is to core surgical training, as it is to neurosurgery. The UK uses a single centralized application system for residency or specialty training, which makes it easy-ish to apply for lots of different specialties all at once. And then lastly, the meat and potatoes of this video and probably why you're here, 
the competition ratios for the most and least competitive specialties. So starting with the lowest competition ratios, emergency medicine at ST4 with 1.31 applicants per post, psychiatry at ST4 for all of its subspecialties, 1.15 applicants per post, that's tied with number three, emergency medicine, the DREEM track, at ST3, 1.15 applicants per post. Now, at Diagnostic Neuropathology ST3, we hit one applicant per post. So if you apply, you are going to be successful. And then finally, number one, genitourinary medicine, gum, at ST4, 0.53 applicants per post. Now, isn't that interesting? Because remember that anytime your application ratio drops below one applicant per post, that means anyone who applies who is eligible and clinically benchmarks as appropriate for the specialty, as in meets all the competencies that they need to to be safe, will get the post. The question might come whether they will be offered a post in a region that they actually want to take it up because they're under no compulsion to do so. And if those posts are limited to only a very small number of geographic centers, which they might be, in these very small specialties, it's not the case that people will actually take those posts up. So you might have a fill rate for your specialty below one as well, just as your applications per post is below one. But that data is not easily available. And then here we go to round things out, the five specialties with the highest competition ratios. Coming in at number five, public health medicine at ST1, 17.46 applications per post. Neurosurgery, ST1 at number four, 19.67. At number three, we have Community Sexual and Reproductive Health, ST1 at 25.61 applicants per post. A massive jump for cardiothoracic surgery at ST1, 45.33 applicants per post. And then rounding it off with an absolutely enormous jump, General Practice and Public Health Combined Track, ST1, 112.13 applicants per place. Now, some of those numbers are absolutely staggering. Can you imagine going for that GP Public Health Track and facing out 100 people for every single job? But that's the competition ratios to one side. And as I said, it can be a bit of a flawed metric. There are some other things that we have to consider. So the first really strong confounder, as I said, is that people can apply to multiple specialties. So just because competition ratios appear to be very high across a number of specialties, it's quite likely, and I've got another video coming talking about this specifically, where we know for this past cycle, this one where I'm presenting the data, how many people applied to multiple specialties. And it's actually off the top of my head, about a third, if not slightly more than a third of people apply to two or more specialties. There are some people that applied for 16 specialties in the past cycle, albeit extremely small numbers, but it just shows the range that is possible. The second thing that you have to consider when talking about this, and you have have to do this in an objective way, I must point out, is that the UK specialty training system has no hard means of prioritising UK graduates for its training places. What I mean by that is that specialty training programmes in the UK can be applied for from anywhere in the world, whether that is at the junior level, uh, the sort of CT1, ST1 level, or the senior level where we're talking about ST3, ST4, the higher specialty training point. And there is also no stipulation on having had previous NHS experience for these training posts, as there often might be for trust grade posts, for example. This is a difference between specialty training and local employment. So in theory, UK graduates are applying on an equal footing with international graduates from elsewhere. Some health systems around the world have ways of prioritizing their own nation's graduates for their own residency programs. Some countries are more explicit about this than others. What we must also acknowledge, however, though, is that there are soft ways that UK grads are prioritized. The types of things that specialty training applications reward are things that are very UK centric. So participation in audit, for example, is much more common in the UK to be done by doctors than in 
other countries. And one of the most common selection tests that's used is something called the MSRA or the Multi-Specialty Recruitment Assessment, which we'll talk about in a minute. That is a pretty NHS-centric exam. It's a primary care GP type exam, but it has a component to it called the Situational Judgment Test. And if you have worked in the NHS or have gone to a UK medical school and you understand the nuances of UK culture and which sort of soft things are often prioritised in the NHS that may not be a feature of other health systems around the world. Practically speaking, UK grads are going to have a more innate understanding of how to do well on that exam. But thirdly, the major thing is the MSRA. So the multi-specialty recruitment assessment, it's an MCQ multi-choice exam, has a clinical component and a situational judgment component. The problem with this exam is it was introduced as a means to cut down on applicant numbers. Just like medical schools in the UK use things like the UCAT and the GAMSAT, these aptitude tests that don't often have an awful lot of predictive validity, but the function they do have is that it allows you to screen out very large numbers of applicants before you take some for interview. The MSRA is essentially the medical system's answer to that problem at specialty training level because applications for specialty training are soaring, like going unbelievably through the roof. We seem to actually have, if anything, decreasing interview and portfolio screening capacity. And so another system was needed and the MSRA, remembering that this exam has only been validated for use in GP, is now used by many, many specialties that aren't that closely allied to GP at all. So radiology, neurosurgery, anaesthetics, etc., etc., all use the MSRA as a way to screen down the massive numbers of applicants they get. And because people put this effort into taking the MSRA if you do very well on it, you can actually use a high MSRA score as a way to <laughs> bulldoze essentially through to interview across many specialties that you might apply to. So someone might apply for neurosurgery, core surgical training, radiology, anaesthetics, all use the MSRA. If you get a very good MSRA score, you will probably get through to interview for all of them. And you might take up an interview slot for all of them. But remember, ultimately, you can only take up one specialty training post. So you've blocked a suitable candidate from taking up that interview slot in the three other specialties that you didn't want to do as much as the radiology slot that you ended up taking. And that is the really major problem that our specialty selection system has at the moment. We have very limited interview capacity, but people can apply to many different specialties, all of which use very similar metrics, including a common entry exam. So we desperately need some way of rationalizing this process, whether that is a specialty specific exam, for example, just giving everyone a random number and assigning them a random specialty, or maybe limiting specialty applications to only two, maybe three specialties to solve this problem. I don't know. What do you think? Let me know. There's a lot more to talk about on this topic and it's really interesting. <laughs> Take care and I'll see you next time.